A series of detonations engulfed the view from the bridge of my cruiser and burnt a streak across the stellar horizon. Smoldering hulks drifted through the vacuum, their crews fated to freeze over in the void, forgotten to time. Salvage and corpses were all that was left in the wake of the brutal railgun bombardment. There was a serenity in the battle, however. Humankind was on its last legs. My fleet had pushed them all the way to the small dwarf planet of Pluto, where they were now in the process of making a hopeless last stand. Suddenly, my monitor flashed to life. Incoming transmission, it read in turquoise lettering. Accept or deny. Confused, I answered the hail. The pixels shifted to an adult human, his hairs greyed and skin wrinkled. Greetings. My name is Commodore Duncan Blade and I represent Stellar Fleet Command. We are willing to accept your unconditional surrender. The human's face was stoic, his voice deep and dry. My blood boiled at the dirty trick. How dare they insult a Grand Admiral of the Imperial Navy? A strong predator would never bow down to weak prey, no less to a lowly Commodore. What is the meaning of this? I yelled, enthralled by the tendrils of rage. I am aware that your species is honor-bound. However, we have a dreadnought en route. This is your only chance at surrender. The man's flat face remained calm, as if he couldn't care less about my question. What's a dreadnought? The name means fear nothing, and it will give you something to fear. I thought better of your intelligence agencies. Scare tactics do not work against the Zepton species. Okay then, we warned you. If you're lucky, you'll get a second chance. With that, the transmission cut out abruptly. The battle continued as we pushed the human destroyers back until they retreated in good order to Karen. There was a solemn silence on the bridge, barring the hum of electronics. That was until my radar operator screamed in panic. Sir, breach echoes at ten o'clock, the biggest I've ever seen. Then, it happened. A rift in space-time clawed its way into existence, orange light shining through. The gateway expanded to the largest size I had ever seen until a giant warship at 1.2 kilometers long emerged. From its position to my left, I noticed a gaping maw of weaponry, including a railgun with a barrel so big some of our smaller ships could squeeze inside, a marvel of engineering capable of biblical annihilation. Another transmission popped up on my screen. I didn't need any convincing to accept it in earnest. Do you change your mind? questioned Commodore Blade smugly. Yes, please spare us. You're in luck. I'm detaching marines to commandeer your vessels. Do not resist. One year later, High Security Lunar Prison. Hello, Grand Admiral Septin, jeered Commodore Blade smugly. One year ago you said that your species would not fall for scare tactics. You were wrong. In what way? You had the biggest ship in the galaxy, and I was staring down its barrel. Of course I would surrender. I shouted back at the unfazed human. That ship wasn't real. It was a metal shell made of melted scrap and powered by recycled engines. It had no weaponry or crew. A sense of relief seemed to wash over his face like he had released a burden from his shoulders. You're lying. We detected 50,000 life signatures. They were little more than mice in breathable boxes. With that, the Commodore showed me the schematic of the Dreadnought. I analyzed it, and sure enough, he hadn't once lied. The lumbering steel beast was a hollow behemoth with only equipment to keep the engines running and compartments for the rodents. My face went red with a deep wrath. I had lost my species the war and the pride of its navy over a metal box. Where is your honor? I yelled. All warfare is based on deception, he replied coldly. Only now did I see the massive flaws in my culture. 